Hey guys, so I'm going to call the story uh, Banji Boys and Cocaine. This is something that happened to me. Um, this is something I experienced. It was years ago, and uh, I don't know if this is going to mean anything to anyone, but for some reason, out of all of the memories that kind of just like pop into my head every once in a while, this one is one of those those memories. Um, and so, and I, I don't know if it's, to me, I think it's funny. It could be sad to others, or it could, could be a mixture. I don't know, but I'm just gonna tell the story. Okay, so uh, this is years ago. I was, this is right after boot camp. I go back to New York City to kind of just be with my family. And a bunch of my friends were, uh, they were in this show, Lower East Side, and it was uh, a Midsummer's Night Dream. And so I went to the show to support them. The show was fantastic. They were fantastic. It was an amazing night. After the show, um, everyone just kind of would like they would, was going home and, and stuff. And so, but here I am. I am in New York City. It's after boot camp. I have just I'm coming to the to to realize that I'm gay. You know, I was coming to that realization, and I didn't want to go home. So because I knew, I, I knew that the, the village, the West Village, Christopher Street, I knew that was kind of like the epicenter of just like the, the gay world. So I decided to go there to get off the train station, in the train stop at Christopher Street, and there I was. And I'm walking around, and uh, I just so happened to walk by these two guys, and they were very like, Banji boy looking to me now to I don't know if this is something that's just in the 90s or something that's just in New York but for me growing up a Banji boy was just someone who was uh, gay and not necessarily in the closet but still they had this tough urban ghetto uh, vibe going on and at the time um, that was at the top of my list of what I found attractive. Now, it's expanded since then. Like I can find a cowboy attractive, a nerd attractive, I can find, you know, but at, at that point, the banji boy was at the top of my list. And so these guys, these two guys, they were definitely banji. I walked by them, I'm looking at them because they were very attractive. And so they're looking at me, but then it hits me like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't, what is this? Are are they looking at me in that way, or is are they like, why is he looking at us like this? You're like, I, 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 this was new to me to navigate this kind of setting, and so I kind of freaked out. And I, I believe it was a Baskin Robbins that used to be there at. Uh, so I like kind of just like they uh, actually let me backtrack. We walk past each other. I look at them. They're looking at me. And then I noticed that I, I turned back, I noticed they're looking, they turned back and they're looking at me. And that's when I was like, oh gosh, what's going on? Okay, so I see the Baskin Robbins, I thought, let me just duck in there. So I do, I get some ice cream. I end up going outside and there's this bench out in the front, so I'm eating my ice cream and you know, they're, they're gone. So I figure, okay, whew, crisis averted. So <laughs> I keep walking and then I notice I don't know how, but they're behind me again. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm thinking they're gonna beat me up. You know, they're gonna attack me or whatever the case is. So I cross the street and I'm just like walking along, you know, like, what do I do? And then I see this, I, I believe it was a church, um, but there was a line of people going into the basement of this church. So I thought, whew, let, you know, I, I get into line, I go down the stairs and there's a, I believe it was a $20 uh, cover charge to get in. I might even pay, you know, I don't know what, pay the money, <laughs> go inside. And I just see there's a bunch of people, there's drinks and hors d'oeuvres, and it was just kind of like a, a party. So I thought, okay, I'll be safe here. So I go get something to drink. I'm just kind of just looking around at people. And uh, these two guys approach me and they say, um, are you clean? Now, I probably should have known better, but at the time and with 
the sensitivities that I had, the racial sensitivities that I had, for them to say that to me, I just thought like, I was offended. And I thought like, what do you mean? I took a shower, of course I took a shower, of course I'm clean. Like that's, that's the mindset that I was in. And so I was like, yeah, I'm clean. And they're like, oh, okay, well that's cool. And so we talked a little bit and they, they went off to do something, I'm not sure, I don't remember what, but they leave and then these two like more urban guys come over and they're like, hey, they start talking to me and they're like, just, you know, those guys ne don't pay them any attention and they're just, you know, they're looking for drugs. And that's when I'm like, drug, what? <laughs> I know this is so, I, I can't believe how naive I was, but. I, it didn't occur to me and when they say that I, I kind of like that's when I looked up and kind of observed what actually was going on and you could see posters of Narcotics Anonymous and NA like all this stuff was all over the place, but I was just in such a, a, a State to get away from Why did what I didn't know that I just rushed in there and didn't pay attention but yeah, it was a Narcotics Anonymous meeting and, and there I was and so I I just like <laughs> <laughs> it was the funniest thing. I, I at least I thought it was funny. I'm like, I can't believe this. I'm in this situation now. And the dudes are like, no, it's cool. Like, we'll take care of you. But that's exactly, they were fishing to see if you were, you know, had drugs or were dealing drugs or whatever the case may be. And uh, so they just said, um, hey, you know, we'll look after you and make sure you're okay. And so I just remember, uh, oh, 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 one important thing, one super important thing that I left out with this story was that I was wearing my, uh, my dress blues. I was in my, my military uniform, you know, so I had the, uh, the hat and the, you know, I had the whole get up on. So afterwards, I remember we went to, they said, hey, do you want to go to this, um, this club? And I said, yeah, sure. So we go to this club and it was kind of like that whole, that New York experience that you don't think really exists, especially for me growing up in New York. I didn't think that it existed, but it totally did. Like where uh, you have the, the bouncers at the door and they're just kind of like, it isn't about, who, you know, how much money you have, but it's about your look. And it's this thing where like we got there and they're letting people, you know, they're just picking people out of the audience of who, of, of, out of the crowd of who can go in and who can't. And, and it didn't matter, it, nothing mattered except how you looked, you know, it was kind of that crazy thing. But I had my uniform on and so they want, someone pointed me out and said, hey, show me your ID and I wasn't of age at the time, but for some reason I gave them my military ID and they looked at it, oh military, come on in. So I, I went in and now as I'm walking in, I said, hey, I'm with these, these two guys here and they look at the guys and they're like, no, they can't come in. So I look back at the guys and they're like, no, no, go in, go in, go in. So I went in and there was a this night where I, again, I felt like I was in a movie because, and this is me growing up in New York, but I never, and, and seeing, you, you know, it's like, oh, this is like something you'd see in a movie, but it's actually happening where like, there was just like these super cool and just like funky looking people and, you know, with pink hair and dancing on, on speakers. Like it just, just crazy, 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 crazy night. And, um, I just, I met, I made friends there and, and they took me home and that was it. That was, that was it. Nothing crazy happened after that. But the point, the, the reason why I wanted to tell this story is just cause, um, first of all, I, I think it's hilarious. I don't know if any of you can relate to it, but, but I, to me, it was a funny experience of just about being gay in New York City and just and coming to terms with stuff and trying to figure out uh, not just being a gay boy but now being a gay man and the difference of 
that and where you fit in and just different experiences. I, I it's, it sticks with me uh, and maybe you guys can tell me why, like maybe there is a component that I, I'm overlooking about it, but it, it is what it is and I just wanted to share that with you guys and maybe you have gone through something similar just as far as like coming out and just the, the nerves of that and, and, and navigating what that means. So if you have, please let me know, please like, comment, subscribe, but most, is, most importantly, comment. I love reading your comments, um, especially when you can relate, when you've had a similar story, I want to hear all of it.